Okay. A couple things going on here. A lot of guys, now when you, a lot of guys break this up different ways. I don't care how you do it. You can do dosing tank, and then force main. So now what we're going to do is find out just how much friction I have to determine how much total dynamic pit I have. So a lot of guys will just do the force main, or pardon me, the, the dosing tank by itself and then do the force main by itself. A lot of guys will just add the whole mess together. I don't care how you do it. Uh, this individual, and some guys will even put the manifold by itself. Whatever. This particular one came up with um, 10 foot of pipe. It's got three 90s. This is straight pipe. This is fitting down here. 90 degree elbows. Um, a gate valve. One of those. And quick disconnect. One of those. Here's what happens. Perfectly straight pipe is a one-to-one -one on how many 10 foot of pipe is 10 foot of pipe. When you have 90s, every time you turn a 90, here we go. Here we go. This is it. So we're in two inch pipe. Every 90 degree elbow is like going through nine foot of straight pipe because of the, the curvature and the friction you lose through that pipe. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say I got 10 feet of straight pipe and I've got three 90 degree elbows. So that's like going through 27 feet, three times nine, 27 feet of straight pipe. And the gate valve, yep, yep, okay, so 1.4 feet. So going through a gate valve is like going through 1.4 feet of straight pipe. And a quick disconnect is right there. Yeah, two feet. Two feet. Okay. And we'll, I'm just going to have a piece that here. 40.4 feet. So what we just done here is said. I want the, the amount of pipe and the equivalent pipe length that it went through. And that happens to be 40.4 feet. And we're going to hold on. But that's, that's how much equivalent pipe lengths I went through in the force tank, or pardon me, in the dosing tank alone. Now when I get to the force main, straight pipe, 185 feet. Um, Four, we've got four 45 degree elbows. We've got one T and one gate valve. So straight pipe, 185 feet, one to one. 45 on two inch pipe, means what we got? Four, 16 feet. T, 11 feet. Yep. 1.4. So we add all that up. So there's all the pipe and equivalent pipe lengths that went through. Add all this together. There you go. 254.8 number first. 200, it's this whole, so if a drop of water from beginning to end of this system, Coming out of the lift tank, I went, I went against 40.4 feet of, well actually it looks more like this, doesn't it? So I come down. <coughs> so inside the lift tank I do this funny looking thing. So I went through approximately 40.4 feet of equivalent pipe length, then I traveled through 214 foot of equivalent pipe length before I was delivered right to the center of the mountain. Okay? How much friction? Go to our table. All right, so we go to, we know our flow rate, we've already determined it, 31 gallons per minute. So we go here, and two inches here, right? Two inches. Yeah, I think that's two inches there. So this is 1.94 feet per 100 feet, right? 
we went from 254. So what we do is 254 plus 8 times 1.94. This is per 100, so we're going to divide it by 100. We have 4.9 feet of friction. Pipe loss. So we went through all the fittings, all the travel distance, to come up with a total equivalent pipe length. We take it to the table, we know our flow rate, and we determine how much head. This is feet of head. Okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. e -E -H. How much force do I got to deliver to get that water there? We figured out one part of the Mediation pipe loss plus, which we just did, uh, network loss plus elevation head. We got this one already figured out. 4.9. Uh, the network losses, both of those uh, manuals give you a pretty straightforward, simple way to figure that. It's, it's in the formula. I won't pull it up. You take your head. Yeah. Times. 4.3. And that gives you, and what that is, is the losses. Here, how much elevation difference is there? That's all there that all that is. 
That is, in this particular design, was 12 feet. So he's pumping 12 feet uphill. So you can kind of see what elevation head is taken pretty much at a one for one. One foot, you get one foot added to the TDH. Two foot, two foot added to the TDH. Pipe losses are taken to equivalents. Okay? So to get TDH, we add this, this, and this. And then that will give us a whole TDH. We'll go to his. one feet the total dynamic head based on adding that together 20, 21 feet and 31 GPM now it's time to choose the pump you, 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 you design your mountain design your sand width and length you designed all your holes your lateral your spacing your size your portion you got it all figured out now pick a pump and if you screw up You'll get to the pump stage and say, whoops, too big, and go back to the beginning. So it's nice to have a little foresight for a calculator that does it for you so that you don't let do all that work and end up with the wrong pump. So let me say 21. So what you do is you come, this is the total head, and this is the total GPM. 21, that's 20, that's 30. Slide over here. And if we go about here, this pump that he's chosen is able producing 40 GPM at 21 feet ahead. We only need 30. The pump's good to go. It can be over, it just can't be under. We don't want a pump curve that's down here. Because it's either going to dribble out or never make it there. Make sense? 21 foot ahead. It's stable doing 40. As long as you can do what the what's needed, and that's this. You've got the right pump. Okay. Yeah, I, I apologize. Some of this stuff is so convoluted back and Are there any questions about yeah. how we choose pumps, how we design all this stuff? The manuals, guys, uh, I'm hoping you'll leave here saying I've seen that before. Read the manual. That's about the best you can do if you're going to design one of these systems. Take the time to what are you looking at for failures? I mean, just you guys got enough mount systems in. What do you what do you see based on your intelligence and experience that causing these things to fail early? We have two malfunctions that I know of. One was poor grade, and this is a big another good question. If you don't grade the site properly once the mount, so if you've got a slope with a mount in the middle of it, you've got to grade that water away from you let it pond up right in front of it, you are letting water migrate into the mound, surface water. That's what one we've seen. The other one we've seen, I can't even tell you, this guy messes with this thing. First thing he did was, when he painted his house, he dumped it all the latex paint down the ground. Oh, okay. 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 Good. He filled his laterals, his laterals all plugged up. He's, he's done a number of this system. The system's been struggling. He, uh, he gets out there messing with it. We get finally working as best as we can, but the system just keeps. He messes with it. And he starts messing with the dosing and all the rest, and he just messes with the system. So <clears throat> that's the other one. Otherwise, they've been, they've been performing like this year. And you have how many? Two. Uh, I, I can't even tell two. you. Two. <laughs> more than two. <laughs> we might be approaching 50 to 100. So we got all that taken care of, right? And then well, let's stop there for a second. Yeah. If, if if the improper sand, if you screw up and use the wrong sand, yes. what are you going to be looking at? You're going to look at the premature failure. <coughs> because you're going to have a lot of silt and more plugging. Okay, if you don't dose properly, you don't put the right pump in, what are you going to be looking at? Failure. The reason why. <coughs> 